Hello everyone. My name is Jennifer Hunt and I am a compression fitter for DNJ Compression. DNJ Compression is a national billing provider that has been billing compression successfully for almost 20 years. We're located in Maryland and I am a local fitter there as well as a national educator. I have nothing to disclose. I am not a commission salesperson. I am a clinician. Um, we want to talk about the purposes of compression therapy. There are various benefits with compression therapy that everyone I think is very familiar with, but the three main purposes for lipedema um, and maybe even lipolymphedema are three main um, purposes. And the first one obviously is to reduce discomfort by supporting the adipose tissue, which is what causes the aching and pain that a lot of patients experience on a daily basis. The second main purpose is to improve patient's mobility that can be impaired by heavy and even distorted limbs. Obviously, if it's difficult to move around or you're carrying around these big heavy legs, your mobility is going to be limited and so is your quality of life. And third is to maintain a reduction um, of edema that is present in a lipedema or a lipolymphedema patient. So knowing that compression therapy has had great impact on success, recent studies show that more than 50% of lipedema patients find compression therapy to be unhelpful. 50%, that's a lot. And why are patients so non-compliant with compression? Well, at being a fitter and being in the clinics every day, all day, I hear obstacles that are very legitimate every day. A good fitter is going to be able to overcome those obstacles. So I guess the main two I'm going to group together are poor fitting garments and inappropriate garment choice for a patient. What does that mean? There are hundreds of compression garments out there. They're all good. It's the bells and whistles that make a garment appropriate for one patient and not the other. A standard compression stocking may be very appropriate for a patient with a venous insufficiency or very minimal um, swelling at the end of the day, but a lipedema patient is going to present very differently than a venous patient. Therefore, most lipedema patients are not successful with a standard circular knit uh, compression stocking of some sort. And I'm going to get into all of the uh, circular versus flat, off the shelf versus custom a little later, but I just want to go over the obstacles that I hear as a fitter why patients are not compliant. If a garment does not fit correctly, it rolls down, it's difficult to get on. Uh, if you have that braceleting or that cuffing that's very common in a lipedema ankle and you have something very thin and stretchy, that's not going to feel good. So that is a very um, common characteristic of a poor fitting garment. An inappropriate garment choice is someone that does not have a symmetrical shape. Most lipedema, lymphedema patients are not symmetrical. Therefore, a cone Knit, uh, a cone knitted garment that goes from bottom to top in a tube is not going to ever fit an asymmetrical shape correctly. Therefore, it's not going to be comfortable. And if it's not comfortable, you're not going to wear it. Um, the other uh, big obstacle, I think, is tolerance of compression. Doctors are very quick to write prescription. Oh, your legs are swollen? Here, go to the place and get yourself some compression stockings. They might even say, oh, you got pretty significant swelling, so I'm going to write a prescription for a 30 to 40 level of compression. Well, unless you are a bodybuilder, it is difficult for anybody to get on a 30 to 40 compression stocking, and therefore, very, very few people could be compliant with that, let alone would it even be appropriate for your individual needs. Chances are not. So there is no textbook case scenario here, but a good factor if uh, as a patient or as a therapist, if you have been prescribed or you have been fitted with a garment or your patient has been fitted with a garment and they experience pain almost immediately. They put the garment on, they do everything correctly, but within an hour, they absolutely cannot tolerate it, they're in discomfort. Chances are that compression is too high. Um, if the adipose tissue just cannot tolerate that, it's going to hurt, and you have to pay attention to that. That's assuming that everything else is going correctly. Um, and then the opposite of that would be, say, it feels wonderful. You 
put the compression garment on, you're following all the rules, and within a few minutes, you're, you're very happy. But as the day goes on, maybe within four or five hours, you start noticing ankle pain or leg pain, and you can actually feel that refill process. That's usually an indication the compression isn't high enough and it is not containing the limb. And again, there is exceptions to all of these, but they are two very good um, guidelines to kind of follow where if you feel that you are not, it's not that you're a sissy and it's not that you, know, you can't tough it out, you really shouldn't have to toughen it out. The garment should feel comfortable. Another really big obstacle is the ability to don and doff compression. Like I said, there's hundreds of garments out there. A good fitter, a good practitioner needs to ask questions, share information, and not kind of the kind of information of what your doctor told you or what you're feeling um, or what your diagnosis is. It's more about what you experience daily that will tell your fitter what they need to know. Sometimes I feel so rude, a patient wants to come in, I've got 30 minutes to get a job done, and they want to give me medical history from 10 years ago. I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor, most of it's over my head, but what I do need to know is where are your obstacles? Why have you not been compliant? What hurts? Why does that hurt? What have you worn? Um, are, are you following these rules? And those answers to those questions will tell me where to go as a fitter. So if a patient says, uh, the pain is just horrible behind my knee, or I have to wear thigh highs, but you know, your calf is like this and your thigh is like this, and everything just rolls down and, and uh, creates a tourniquet behind the knee, of course you're not gonna be a compliant. You're gonna be in agony and barely be able to walk. I need to know that. As a fitter, as a practitioner, we need to know what, what you are experiencing, and that will give us information how to go to the next step. Appearance. This is mainly for more females than males. There's nothing pretty about compression garments, although they have come a very, very long way over the years. My biggest obstacle, and I, I work in lymphedema clinics, I work with lipedema, 10% of my patient load is symmetrical. However, Circular Knit and I do not cross paths very often, but I was a vascular fitter before I was a lymphatic fitter, so I have a lot of experience with it. It's not about a choice of what you want to wear, and this is a perfect case scenario, is something is not always better than nothing. An ill-fitting garment can cause more harm than it can cause good. Sometimes the lesser evil is not the thinner fabric or the more attractive fabric. You can actually cause yourself harm by wearing a garment that is inappropriate for your shape or your condition. So again, a qualified fitter or a good clinician is not gonna give you that option. Nobody can prevent you from going to the internet and ordering what you want, but at some point it's gonna humble you and you're gonna back, end up back in your fitter's uh, case room and, and you're gonna get compliant one way or the other. Um, I cannot make them prettier, although I am very pleased at the bells and whistles that they have come up with the last few years. I've been asked not to be loyal to any particular vendor, and I'm not. My job is to know the bells and whistles of all of them, but there are vendors out in the hallway, and ask them. They want you to use their product. They want to sell you product. If you don't have a good fitter, find a local rep. They'll help you find a fitter, or they'll fit you themselves, because they want you to use their product. The resources are out there. Use them and ask questions. Um, last but not least is the cost. Whenever we don't, we're not dealing with symmetrical or vascular, this stuff is expensive. Uh, any kind of hosiery-like garment that's flat knit is made in Germany. It's very expensive. I've seen it. I've seen it during the manufacturing state, and if you saw the time and the knitting and the expertise and the cost of the machines that make it, it makes sense why it's so expensive. People feel that insurances usually don't cover, that is not true. Um, the reimbursement varies from state to state, so sometimes local medical supply companies choose not to bill your insurance, but that does not mean your insurance doesn't pay. So understand your policy. Most of the time, compression garments come under durable medical equipment. So if someone's telling you, oh, your insurance doesn't pay, call your insurance company. Find out what your durable medical equipment benefit entails. And if you have that benefit, ask about compression garments. That's usually custom. They're flat knit. 
Your local DME can give you the CPT codes that you might need to feel comfortable whether or not you really do have to pay out of pocket or whether or not there is insurance coverage. Moving on, which garment to choose? Now I could stay here for four days and go over a thousand options. However, they don't let me do that. So, and I couldn't have show pictures because I would have to show partiality. A lipedema patient and a venous patient or a mild lymphedema patient have choices. There are circular knit garments, which I think most people have experienced at one point or another, and they are usually ready to wear garments, but they are available in custom if needed. They are seamless. They are thinner than a flat knit. They are stretchy, more attractive. They are available in both open toe, closed toe, upper extremity, lower extremity. They are appropriate for minimal symptoms. Um, patients that do not present in the foot or they don't have the ankle cuffing usually will get great relief from a ready to wear gradient compression stocking and lucky them because they are affordable, they are easy to clean. Um, all of them probably wear out in about six months, but for the most part, it's a doable, it's a doable maintenance. It's pretty simple. They look like something that you might buy at a department store now, so you just pay a lot more for them, but they work. Symmetrical shape of a limb is critical for a circular knit garment, so if you do not have a symmetrical shape, whether it's just because of the way your body is or whether it's a lipedema symptom, it, it's typically probably not going to work for a circular knit. I can't say there's not an um, exception to every rule, but for the most part, my experience has been an asymmetrical shape just cannot wear a garment like that. So now we're gonna go into the flat knit. This is where the Germans have um, absolutely have created a product that dates back to the 1800s that not only work, but if fitted correctly, they are extremely comfortable they will minimize any kind of symptom that is associated with lipedema and lymphedema, even severe vascular insufficiencies. Typically, or almost always, they are custom made. I think there are some manufacturers out there that wanted to be great at everything and they tried to do some ready to wear flat knit garments, but it almost contradicts each other because if you could have a ready to wear flat knit, you probably didn't need a flat knit. So therefore, it just kind of contradicts each other. Um, it is a seamed garment, and although that sounds terrible and has a seam up the back and you think that might be worse than death, the beauty of that seam allows that type of garment to be darted. And this is where the characteristics for lymphedema is absolutely critical. So that braceleting or that cuffing at the ankle that we talked about, a lot of lipedema patients will have no swelling in the foot or maybe nothing in the hand, but the arm or that ankle, it's almost like a shelf. It just comes out of nowhere and it refills. And sometimes it gets hard and painful. One of the options that you could have on a flat knit is they will dart that area. Wherever there's an area of flexion, a wrist, uh, ankle, an elbow, the bend of the knee, the hip, that garment can be darted, which allows that flexion without causing restriction. So not only is it much more comfortable, but it doesn't allow that um, adipose tissue to refill in that very critical area. So that is one of the most beautiful uh, features of a, of a seamed garment. The other thing about flat knit is it is very suitable for asymmetrical or distorted shapes. So we were talking about lack of mobility. Patients complain that they cannot get around, they can't go up steps, they can't work, they can't stand for long periods of time because gravity is bringing all of that fluid, all of that heavy tissue down. By wearing a flat knit, which has very little give, it contours to the body and it lifts that adipose tissue up. It does increase the circulation, which will give you many more hours of being able to stand on your feet or having comfort or not feeling that heaviness. Um, and again, it's a difficult fit, but if you have a good fitter that can fit you correctly, it, it's, it's life changing. It really will allow you to live your life without limits. And that's, I think, what everybody's goal here is, is quality of life and being able to do daily activities without limitations. Um, 
there's a whole another stream of choices in the flat knit world. And what I mean by that is there are softer fabrics, there are uh, less giving fabrics, and then among those fabrics, there's levels of compression. A lymphedema patient typically will present very hard and fibrotic, easy, easy fix. Use very heavy fabrics, high levels of compression, they can tolerate it because they have so much hard tissue. Lipedema patient, it's different complicated. Everything hurts. A lymphedema patient may not experience pain. So even though they need the flat knit, you got to think the other way. It's less compression, softer fabric. And when I say softer, a flat knit means that the fabric is sewn flat. So the integrity starts at the very tip of the distal end of the body, so right at the toe area. And then it's pulled together and it's seamed. But they, every company, even the ones out, out here that make flat knit have variations of it. So a lipedema patient that has very soft tissue would do much better with lower levels of compression and a softer flat knit fabric because their tissue is softer and they will feel that compression so much more intensely than say a lymphedema patient or a patient that has fibrosis. Now a lipo lymphedema patient is a patient that has both. And this is tricky. Fortunately, these manufacturers that make these crazy expensive garments do allow fitting guarantees. And this is critical in, a, in an event with a patient that experiences both lipedema and lymphedema because they present as a lipedema patient soft fluid or soft tissue, um, very um, sensitive to touch. Some people even bruise very easily, but they have fibrosis. So that has to be decongested typically before they can go into a flat knit garment or they're just not gonna see the benefit. And then usually they're in some kind of a physical therapy treatment or an occupational therapist where they are decongesting the limb with short stretch bandages for a period of time. And once the reduction of the fibrosis is gone, then their maintenance is going to go back into that flat knit garment. Well, what else do we have? Available open and closed toe. When you're dealing with custom, the sky is the limit allows for comfort features that improve compliance. I would like to co combine that with sewn in sections to allow different levels of compression when needed. Again, this is the difference between a lipedema and a lymphedema. A lymphedema patient almost always presents below the knee. Doesn't mean it doesn't go all the way up and all over the place, but typically it'll start in the lower part of the leg. Lipedema patients do not always present that way. Sometimes it's just above the knee. And fluid takes a path of least resistance. So you can't compress just the upper leg or the fluid's going to go to the bottom leg. However, the level of compression that they need above the knee may be higher than what they need below the knee. So how do you overcome that? Anybody? So it's layering. So again, it's, very, um, it's a costly option. It's very, very effective. And it's custom made. So what you can make for your patient is a below the knee stocking, whether you want to use something circular if there's no presentation there at all, or maybe you are using a flat knit just because of the shape of, of the patient's leg um, and you need the bells and whistles of a flat knit, but maybe less compression. And then you layer it with maybe a capri pant or maybe a thigh high legging, which is like a footless legging or footless thigh high. And it's the overlapping of the garment that will allow for different levels of compression where the patient needs it. Now again, a qualified fitter is going to know you can't really go from like a class one below knee and then a class three forte above the knee. You're going to have some kind of transition at the knee. But there is a way to overlap properly where the patient is only getting the maximum compression where they need it as opposed to having to suffer all day with sore ankles because they need the compression in the thigh. So the other advantage of a um, flat knit that has sewn in levels is the abdomen area. So a lot of lipedema patients will discover fullness in an abdomen and maybe the very top part of the thigh and then nothing else. You can actually have different levels sewn in the compression panty, part of a capri pant, and then different levels in the legs, and then again, different level again in the knee high. So now you're really isolating the areas that are of concern. What does that do? Success. At the end of the day, eight to 10 hours out of the day, you should have little to no refill if your compression garments fit correctly, that you're being compliant, and that they're within their life expectancy. 
that is realistic. That is not a dream. It, it, it's the way it should be. If you are not experiencing that, you need to speak up. You need to ask why you're not being fitted correctly and why you are uncomfortable all day because it's not acceptable. And it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and then the last thing that I want to talk about at the flat knit is the quality of containment in a flat knit is a little different than circular knit. So um, maintenance of a garment is extremely important. I know that your fitter probably says, you're going to wash these every day. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't use wool light. Don't use fabric softener. And they walk out of the room. So you're thinking, OK, well, I wore them all day, but I didn't sweat. I was home. I was just typing. You know, they're fine. I'm just not going to wash them. I'm going to wear them the next day. Washing compression daily has absolutely nothing to do with being clean, although personal hygiene is important. What fatigues is the gradiency of the compression. So if you put on a tight pair of jeans in the morning and at the end of the day they're loose, fabric fatigue. Well, compression fatigues as well, but because of the nature of it, it does have an elastic stretch, so it may still feel tight the next day, but it fatigued. So that gradiency isn't there. You have completely compromised the garment. So when you put that on the next day, you're not going to get the same effect that you got the day before. What happens? It slides down. It bunches. It gets caught behind the knee. Like, I hate these things. I don't know what that girl was talking about. These are just as bad as the other ones. So every single time I can go back, and I go back to step one, did you do this? Did you do that? And did you do this? Lying will not help you because that tells me everything. As a fitter, I'm on the phone. I fit the person three days ago. We were all happy. Everybody's hugging everybody. They leave. They're thrilled. You're the best fitter in the world. Three days later, you have no idea what you're talking about. This is doing exactly what, and then I have to stop. I'm not your mother. I'm not your doctor. I'm not here to judge. I can't fix something unless I know what's broke. And I ask these questions. Did you wash them every day? Yep, yep, yep. Ask a couple more questions, and then I realize they didn't wash them. So I'll go back, and I'll say, listen, this is why it was important to wash them. Well, you know, I may not have washed them the one day, or you know, I just kind of rinsed them out a little bit. They have to be washed. So it is a pain in the butt if you only have one set. Like I say, insurance companies typically, not all of them unfortunately, but typically do pay. And the ones that do cannot discriminate and say you can have this, but you can't have that. So either they pay, it's a, it's a covered code, or it's not. You always are entitled to more than one because you have to wash I have to wash them every day. So usually I'll do a custom garment for fit, make sure it fits correctly. There's a trial period. If anything needs to be fixed, they'll remake it 10 times for free. And then we go on to the second set. So once you have two, you can wash and wear. Um, but, but compliancy and understanding the limitations of a garment will help you be successful. Garments don't change. So if you get a different um, result every day, like one day this happens, and then the next day there's something else happens, it's you. The garment is the same, every, like it doesn't change. So if the garment is failing or, or there's something about it that isn't working, it is going to be consistent every day. Re read the directions, call whoever fits you with them, ask questions. Stuff's expensive, somebody's making money off of them. Speak up and ask, hey, why, why am I experiencing this? And it may be as a fitter, that's how you learn. If I get 10 people that have the same complaint, and I figured out how to fix it on the first two, and now I'm thinking that in my head when I go to my next patient. So there's nothing but education available by you ex expressing what you're feeling. You're only going to educate the fitter. You're only going to educate the manufacturers, assuming that everybody's following the rules. So that's about all I can really say about flat knit. Um, it is expensive, it is wonderful, it does work. It is hard to be compliant when it's hot. Can't take any of that away. But I can tell you that if you feel better every day, those other obstacles aren't so, aren't so bad. And I think that's, that's the goal here is we get past the obstacles. Um, the other thing I, I didn't really talk much about because I don't know how applicable it is for all lipedema patients, is nighttime garments. You never sleep in gradient compression. So there are dozens and dozens of company that, companies that make things that you can wear at night. And this might buy you freedom every now and again when you're going out to dinner with your husband or you're going to a wedding or you're going to an event and you only want a couple hours of freedom. A lot of times the nighttime garment can decongest. 
So although you don't have anything protecting yourself as far as refilling, depending on the aggressiveness and the quality of a nighttime garment, sometimes that can kind of reverse whatever damage you did and get you back to square one every morning. Uh, an expectation of any type of garment is about eight to 10 hours. You should be able to do whatever you want, whether you're a triathlete or you sit at a computer all day. You should be able to wear compression and have little to no discomfort for about eight to 10 hours. You can leave them on for 15. However, it did its job after eight or 10 and take it off, call your losses and, and go into a nighttime plan if you have one. And ideally, you wanna be waking up every morning at that personal best. And when you're not at the personal best anymore, you gotta start thinking, how old are these things? When was the last time I saw my doctor? and maybe make an appointment with your fitter and be refit. So add it into the budget because it is a necessity. So the alternative to gradient compression or hosiery-like garments are adjustable garments. These garments have become the greatest and latest for lots and lots of different reasons. All of the companies are keeping up with the Joneses, so they have all come up with their versions of um, these adjustable garments. And if any of you are not familiar with adjustable garments, they're neoprene and they Velcro on. Some of them are custom made, some of them are ready to wear, some of them are just for the lower leg, some of them compress the whole leg. Recently, they have now come out with arm sleeves. We use these garments for lots and lots and lots of different things. First of all, it is a wonderful resource for patients that cannot tolerate compression. They can't tolerate bandages. A lot of times they've been in and out of wound care. They just can't tolerate it. So the beauty of the adjustable garments is the nature of neoprene engages and relaxes with movement. So when you're very active, it works as a very sturdy gradient compression garment, but when you're not being active, it also relaxes. So it does not constantly add that extra pressure to the adipose tissue that causes discomfort. So whether or not you feel that that is the right choice for you, it is also a wonderful resource for treatment. So patients that actually have to go through um, some kind of a decongestive treatment and say they're in a clinic and they go once or twice a week and they get bandaged, that, that um, integrity of that wrapping lasts about 24 hours. But the therapist may have you keep it on until you come back so you don't refill. Well, just like anything else, it loosens. And when it loosens, it slides down. And when it slides down, it bunches up. And when it bunches up, all the fluid bunches up and it just creates a hot mass. So when you go back to the therapist, she unwraps you and she rewraps you again. The same thing keeps happening. You kind of tread water. Well, where we can use these adjustable garments are in between the wrappings. So after the 24 hours, you take the wrappings off. You put the adjustable garments on. You can take your shower. You can wear them day and night because of the nature of neoprene. You can actually sleep in these garments. And not only will they not allow you to refill, but they will also maintain daily swelling with activity. So the worst case scenario here is you're constantly adjusting them. Nice problem to have is because you're adjusting them because they're making the limb smaller. They're making that tissue softer. So as the leg goes down, the garment gets loose. You just snug it up. It is an absolute wonderful resources in lots of different um, areas. They are available in both custom and ready to wear if you're able to fit ready to wear garments, and it's an um, excellent choice if you have a history of ulcerations just because of the condition of the skin and the dawning of the stocking on and off. Um, the life expectancy is usually a year, sometimes 18 months, depending on the quality. So if you are paying out of pocket and you don't have all the money for a flat knit garment, here's a day and night choice for a fraction of the price. It's not gonna look pretty in a dress, but it'll work and it'll be comfortable. Um, in most cases, it's definitely more cost efficient if there is not any insurance coverages. So as far as insurance goes, I don't know why it's reimbursable in different states. Uh, I work for a company that is a national billing provider. So what we have found is in uh, certain states, the insurance companies reimburse at a higher rate than in other states. So a lot of therapists that have to measure and fit their own patients because they don't have a local fitter, because there's not enough money for um, a DME to educate someone like me or someone that's interested in fitting, so the therapist does all the work. While their job is to reduce you and to treat you and do manual lymph drainage, they don't know, they don't have the ability to know every garment out there. 
So we offer webinars. Um, I personally educate online. I have done FaceTime and Skype fittings with therapists in another state to walk them through that scary custom fitting um, process because, you know, these things are expensive. Therapists get nervous. Like, I don't want to measure somebody for a garment that costs $700. And, you know, what if I make a mistake? What if I do that? I walk them through it. We do it through FaceTime. We do it through Skype. And that way the patient, I mean, the therapist feels comfortable. The patient gets fit with something that they are able to uh, contain with, and then they're able to utilize their insurance because it's being billed in a different state. So it's kind of a win-win for everyone. Um, we do have a website. It is dnjcompression.com. Uh, and on that website, there's everything from measuring forms to uh, having your insurance checked to see if it is a covered commodity, if you've been told uh, that it's not. Um, and it, it's just a wonderful resource. And again, we're not loyal to any manufacturer. We don't make anything. We are there to provide patient with a appropriate fitting garment so they can have a successful and a more compliant life. Now, I did see the two minute thing wave. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, sorry. Okay. All right, we got, a couple, um, we got time for like one or two questions. We get a question, what is the average life expectancy of a garment? A gradient compression garment, like a stocking-like garment or a hosiery, is six months. Okay. And then the next question is, what are the problems or concerns of wearing compression to bed? Never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever wear gradient compression to bed because when the heart rate goes down, the compression stocking is still the same strength. So we are not trying to push fluid up when the heart is down. That's why they make very specific decongestive garments at night. Now the exception to that rule is the adjustable garments that we told, that I was talking about, that are neoprene. Just because of the nature of neoprene, when you're not active, that garment will automatically relax. A stocking doesn't know how to do that. It's just gonna be what it is. And it creates a tourniquet, the fluid doesn't know where to go, so it ends up as like a reflux. It can be very damaging to your veins. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. We appreciate it.